So here's how I was thwarted in the setup video. This says 7980XE, right? So that's what I that's what I assumed was in there. So I, that's what I used. This says 18 on it though. 18, that's, that's the number I should have looked at. There it is. I think this should help. Excellent. The Enermax Liquitec TR42 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler has a massive contact plate made just for Threadripper and is rated for 500 watts of heat dissipation. High-pressure PWM fans mount to rubber channels on the radiator to absorb vibration, and the sexy logo and edge lighting on the block is addressable for syncing with your motherboard. It comes with an RGB control box too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is gonna be my attempts to continue my overclocking experiments with the RTX 2080 Ti's and SLI, or NVLink, I should say, NVLink two-way. And I'm trying to upgrade this core system. If you watched the video where I set it up, you might have uh, noticed that I accidentally installed my 10-core 7900X instead of my 18-core 7980XE. I have swapped in the 7980XE right now. And what I was trying to do is just get some baselines, some baselines for comparison, but it's not going very well. I need to delist my 7980XE and I will be doing that very shortly. I've got the Derbauer delitting tool for LGA 2066 CPUs right here, but I want to be able to say here's the before and the after for that. So I have a 4.7 gigahertz overclock going right now on all the cores on my 7980XE. The voltage is at 1.275. I haven't done too much tweaking aside from that and I'm overheating and throttling. I've hit 100 and over 100 degrees Celsius on all of the cores. So it's just con constantly dialing back that 4.7 gigahertz overclock and making making it pretty ineffective. So that said, rather than mess around too much with tweaking with voltages and stuff to get myself stable as is, I'm gonna start upgrading. I'm gonna delid, which should reduce my temperature significantly. I'm gonna upgrade this EK water block, which is an older one that actually might be a little bit corroded and not efficiently cooling inside. I'll be swapping that in with an EK mono block and I have several other components that are supposed to like be arriving literally today. So as I proceed, I will hopefully be adding things to this test bed, running tests in between, and hopefully I'll be somewhere in the ballpark of where Steve and Jay are by the end of the day with their Time Spy Extreme world record overclocking attempts. I should also point out that Derbauer is also involved now and he's using LN2, but that's cheating, so I don't care. I'm, I'm mainly trying to compete with Steve and Jay for now. So I'm becoming very suspect of my CPU block a little bit, but also really hoping that the D-Lid will help me out some. Uh, so here was my score from the initial tests I was running with the 7900X11221. And here's the score just submitted, 12,035. So that's a decent jump. Although the CPU score only jumped by like around a thousand points, graphics score jumped up by about 200 points. So really all I wanted to get was a baseline here to give me something to compare against as I do the thermal upgrades. And I wanna point out, even though I lowered the CPU frequency, we were running at 4.6 gigahertz on all cores on the CPU, we were still hitting above 100 degrees on the single cores. So we we're still probably experiencing some throttling. So, so rather than mess with this current configuration any further, I am going to delib the CPU and I think that monoblock might be arriving any minute now. That 12,035 score did bring me up on the list though. Currently sitting at seven. I think I was like 14 uh, just, just a few minutes ago. This will be my second time delitting a Skylake X processor. It is pretty foolproof with this tool, but we're still doing a somewhat dangerous action on a very expensive processor. So yes, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Uh, we're gonna line up the triangle though. Very thoughtful pin to do it that way. Like so. All this does is apply very firm pressure to the side of the IHS in a uniform manner. And we're, we're keeping a close eye on uh, this little surface mount, these little surface mount guys over here, because as soon as the IHS shifts just ever so slightly, it should indicate that the seal is broken. I'll try to do it by hand, but I might need to crank it in just a second. That's a decent amount of pressure being applied now. No, oh, there it went. <laughs> <laughs> that was more of a pop than I've seen in the past. It's fine because it didn't actually knock off any of these surface mount mounted things over here. And we just have to hope that none of the stuff that's inside the IHS suffered from that. Gently. Ta da! That's a D lid. <laughs> a little nerve wracking.
All right, guys, the D-Lid is successful, thankfully. I don't think anything has been destroyed. I guess I shouldn't wait to say that until I've reinstalled it and tested it. But package is arriving today, as predicted. Very excited, and I think this will allow us to make an even bigger improvement on our CPU temperatures and hopefully also scores and overclocking frequency by water cooling it better. All right, what do we have here? First, check it out. That is a, uh, a monoblock, specifically for the Rampage 6 Extreme, right? ROG R6E, yes. That will help us greatly because the block we've been using, I really don't think is doing an appropriate job. This is an EK Supremacy Evo, but it's like two and a half years old and I mistreated it, which means it got a little corroded inside. Other than that, oh, look, we have GPU water blocks. This is the EK Vector RTX 2080 Ti RGB. The RGB is the least of my concerns because I just want things to be cooler. And they did send me two of these and these will fit on the reference Founders Edition design motherboard. And I've got two of those and two of these. So it looks like I get to water cool my graphics cards. I'm not even sure I'm gonna get to this today because I think for starters, I need to get that monoblock installed uh, and at least get some more tests going with the air cooled setup. But these are ready to go for next steps. Let's get back to the CPU though. One more package has shown up, um, and this, I'm pretty sure, is memory. Ta-da! We got a new kit of G-Skill Trident Z memory. Uh, the Trident Z you've probably seen before. Uh, it is a design that they've been using for quite some time. No fancy RGB or anything going on here. What the selling point is of this kit is the speed. It is a four by eight gig kit made specifically for X299. This will work for X399 as well. And it's a 3866 speed out of the box, cast latency 18. And I should be able to overclock this even further by increasing the voltage and um, doing other overclocking things. So thank you, G-Skill. This should also help. Finishing the first run with the monoblock installed right now. Here it comes. Survey says, oh my gosh, <laughs> we just jumped 1500 points. 1500 points. All right, so let me be clear here as, as, as to what's been changed. CPU has been delitted, and you guys might have noticed that I did not use liquid metal. I actually don't have any liquid metal here, and Kyle, as kind as he was to bring the delitting tool over because he had borrowed it from Gamers Nexus. Uh, he didn't bring any liquid metal. So I do have liquid metal coming. It's, it should be here tomorrow. So we'll see how things go and I might pull the block off and apply liquid metal between the uh, 7980XE die and the heat spreader. The only other things that have been changed are the D-Lid, the addition of the monoblock instead of the uh, just the CPU block, 
and then I increased the pump speed because the pump was connected to one of the headers on the motherboard and it just wasn't running very fast, so I have it connected to an external Zalman unit that's running it closer to maximum speed. All of that, without changing any of the overclock settings or anything, still running at 4.6 gigahertz on all cores on the CPU, led to about a 1500 point increase in my score. And I wanna say that yes, a lot of that had to do with the CPU score increase. It looks like my, my graphics score is about the same. CPU score is now up to 10,714. And it still thinks I have G-Sync on. Let's compare our online results and see, see what that brings us to. Oh look, look who just took the five spot. Yeah, I am literally, there's only one person, time art, between me and Jay. Granted, I still need to make up about 1,500 points, but uh, that would put me in very rare company, I think, right up here in the top. If I can get up into the top three or four with no, nobody up there but me, Derbauer, uh, Gamers Nexus, and Jay, I think I'll be pretty happy. So uh, I still got work to do. All right, guys, here's a follow-up. Uh, if you can maybe see the table behind me, I have cleared off, and after the last bit in this video, I have actually spent about a day and a half, uh, not the entire time, but a ton of time, probably a good 12 hours, tweaking settings, messing around, and trying to get more higher scores from TimeSpy. Unfortunately, I haven't had that much luck, but I decided this morning I was gonna take drastic steps in order to try to get something a little bit higher than I had before. So my apologies, because everything is just a huge mess out here. I have really just set stuff up and things are chaotic, but this is my only portable AC unit and it is kind of tied into the back of the garage there for its exhaust, so I set up this uh, cardboard tube completely hacked together with duct tape and everything in order to pipe my cold air over to the system here, which has been set up with more fans on it. Other than that, I also have a supplemental power supply, additional power supply for one of the CPUs because I was getting very close to the 1200 watt power, power limit of the power supply I have installed. Fortunately, it has run. I did finish a test just now that had a better score, and I'm trying to play around a little bit with settings that might help since, since I do have colder overall temperatures with the cold air from the AC being piped in right here. But this run is about to finish. Let's see what my score turns out to be. Temps are way better. Max temp on the GPU is 61C. 13663, that is better, but it's still not quite getting me where I need to be. So here's the current layout of scores on 3D Mark, and as you can see, I've fallen. Uh, several people have jumped up. We've got DJ Kuhn from Korea. Brian from BPS Customs has joined in. He's got a couple EVGA cards. I dropped down to ninth, but 13,600-ish does get me up to eighth. 13,663, I will still be in eighth. I need to jump up uh, to over 13,800 if I want to start competing with the guys in 5, 6, and 7th range. But I think this mainly became a time issue because I'm about to go on another trip. These things just keep popping up and taking my time away from doing stuff like this. But my options were to either try the AC trick, apply the water blocks, or try to figure out something else with my radiator solution. I decided to do the AC thing because I don't really have all the stuff I need to go further advanced water cooling right now. I'm actually really short on radiators. So I think I'm going to have to leave it at this for now. I'm sorry guys, I tried to provide more competition from Gamers Nexus. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, Rip Paul, I guess, is the end story here. Maybe next time we have an OC in competition, I will compete a little bit more strongly. Hold on, I take it all back. I take it all back. I, I spent more time and I have made progress. Actual progress. Hold on. Yeah. Alright, first things first. There's my score, 13861 for the record here. Let me turn off air conditioner and before anything else turning the Wi-Fi back on so we could go ahead and validate and compare that online 13861 now if we jump over here to our current Hall of Fame for two GPUs you'll notice that currently number five there is Brian BPS Customs he did a great job with his setup and that's not going to be there at number five for long I was at 13806 so there's my old 5th place score, 13,536, and I was pushed all the way down to 8th or 9th place. Um, but I basically just kept raising my base clock. This was after trying a bunch of different various overclocking methods yesterday, and I kept getting just a little bit higher and a little bit higher. I got to 13,700, 13,732, 13,738, 13,759, and then finally I got to 13,803, which didn't bring me up in the standings, but tied me for 8th. Uh, and then I got to 13806, and that brought me up to 7th, but really close to both Brian and WTO Mike here. So if I refresh with my new score, there we go. 
I am back into fifth place with 13861. And my wife is home. So there I am for now at least in fifth place with 13861. I would have been in fourth place, but uh, a dude from Korea has jumped in there in between me and Jay and Gamers Nexus. But uh, I think that's where I'm gonna be for now. Here's a quick look at the final setup, the ghetto cardboard mod here for a tube of air to go over to the computer assembly. Uh, I've also been adding some cardboard around the side just to sort of direct the air. This could be much more efficient. This was supposed to be a very quick setup so I could just try to get stuff a little bit cooler in here. And I got several fans uh, doing some extra work pushing the air over the entire rig. I got this one on top trying to pull some air off. And of course I've got the dual power supplies to power everything. The maximum wattage we pulled was 1127, which is uh, not too bad at all. Here's a look at my GPU overclock, 1085 on the memory, plus 150 on the GPU clock, voltage maxed, power sliders maxed, and the fans were maxed too. That gave me a boost clock of 1795 with the memory at 2021, and it looks like my max frequency was 2085. As for the CPU, I have an interesting overclock going on that I'll show you in a second, but uh, basically I'm getting it just over 5 gigahertz on a single core, uh, and when it's running across all cores, it's hitting at 4,842 megahertz. All right, I hope you guys can see this okay, but uh, these are my overall results here. Target turbo mode frequency, 4.972 gigahertz. AVX offset is 100 uh, megahertz below that. And then my DRAM is just below 4,000, just below four gigahertz. And then also my cache frequency, also known as the mesh, uh, is at 3211 megahertz. And these numbers are all wonky because I did some BCLK or base clock overclocking, bumped that up to 103.6. And that is what was working for me today. The fact that my frequencies are this high is actually baffling to me because I was getting nowhere near this yesterday. Today was just that base clock overclocking and then of course the air conditioner that helped me get much, much better frequencies. Uh, I was doing by core overclocking, which allowed me to set a specific turbo limit for each core, which is at 48, 47, and 46, respectively, for two cores, eight cores, and 18 cores. Of course, then that is multiplied by 103 point whatever my base clock, 103.6, and that gives you the frequency, which is a little bit harder to figure out when you're not multiplying by 100. So there you go, DRAM frequency 39, 36. I did not mess with advanced timings. I'm at 18, 19, 19, 38. And then I did a few other things like uh, load line calibrations at seven, 140% uh, and 200% current capability for the power delivery and then also of course voltages CPU core voltage at 1.35 cache voltage at 1.33 DRAM was at 1.45 input voltage at 1.95 and system agent at 1.1 so now I can say that's all for this video, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. I am really happy that this setup started to produce, produce some results. I got back into the top five, even though I'm still just using air cooling for the GPUs. A huge, huge thank you to G-Skill for sending that memory kit over, EK for sending the mono block, and also the GPU blocks that I haven't even used yet. And then of course, Gigabyte for providing the 2080 Ti, and Nvidia for providing the other 2080 Ti. Thank you guys also so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will have more videos coming at you very soon. So subscribe to Paul's Hardware if you're not already. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.